In today's video, I'm going to be breaking down the five levels of Neo Soul chord progressions. Take a listen to what level five would sound like. I've got an example prepared, and then we're going to jump into the lesson. Enjoy. My channel is all about helping you create awesome neo soul, R&B, and modern sounds on your guitar. If you're new here and that sounds like your kind of thing, make sure you hit the subscribe button and you click the notification bell so that you're notified every single time I release a new video. Now, in today's video, as I said, I'm going to be breaking down the five levels of neo soul chord progressions. Now, level five doesn't mean the best; it just means the most kind of detailed and complex chord progressions. Sometimes chord progressions in the lower levels, like level one, can actually be the best option for a song. So don't take this to mean level five is better. Just use these levels to understand the options that you have available. So before we fully get started, I just want to make a quick announcement, and that is that my book Chord Charisma 2.0 is coming out on December the seventh. So I'm really excited to share it with you. I have put so much hard work into this book. And I'm sure you're going to really, really love it. So keep an eye out. I'll be sharing updates leading up to the release of the book. So let's jump into the lesson. And the first level of neo soul chord progressions is just a basic progression with the seven chords in your key. So first of all, you've got to choose a key. In today's video, we're playing in the key of B, and we are playing a stepwise chord progression. And a stepwise chord progression is just where you play adjacent chords in your key. So you can go forwards or you can go backwards. I'm going backwards, and I'm starting on chord six, which is a G sharp minor. Then I'm moving to F sharp, and then I'm moving to E. Okay, so that's a stepwise chord progression. There's lots of other ways of creating chord progressions. One other way you create chord progressions is by using the cycle of fourths. If you don't know how to do that. Check out my video I've made on the cycle of fourths to create chord progressions. That's a really, really great way of creating neo soul progressions. But that is step one. Simple as that. Create a basic chord progression with the seven chords that are in your key. Just to recap, we've got G sharp minor, F sharp major, and then E major. Level two is extensions. These chords sound a bit plain, a bit vanilla at the moment. So what we can do is we can spice them up. And embellish them with extensions, things like sevenths, ninths, elevenths, and thirteenths. So I'd like you to take a look at this chart here. This chart shows you all the options you have for particular chords in your key. For example, chord one in our key, which would be B. You could play a sus two chord, a sus four chord, a major six chord, a major seven chord, a major nine chord. And a major thirteen chord, so you could play that as B major nine, B major seven, B major thirteen, B major six nine.、Uh, all these different options for chord number one, and you've got all the options in this chart for all the chords in your key for extending these chords. If you want a copy of this chart and chord diagrams for every single chord mentioned in this chart, it's down in the description at my Patreon page. You can grab it there. But let's continue. Let's apply these extensions to. The basic chord progression that we've got written from level one. So, this G sharp minor down below, you can see all the options we've got. I'm going to just choose a minor nine chord. So we can play a G sharp minor nine. Okay, that's our first chord. Then we're moving to F sharp. Now there's lots of options here. You could play sus two, sus four, dominant seven, dominant nine, dominant eleven, dominant thirteen. I'm going to choose. Dominant eleven. Now let's move to our E chord, which is chord four in our key. There are lots of different options for this. There's even more options. There's cool, crazy chords like six nine sharp eleven chords. Yeah, you can do all sorts major nines. But I'm just going to choose a basic major seven chord. Okay. So we've got G sharp minor nine, F sharp eleven. And then E major seven, and that is level two. Level three is passing chords. Now this chord progression is starting to sound quite nice. Okay, sounds quite pretty, but there's just something missing, and I think that little thing that's missing is passing chords. So passing chords are chords that are not part of the main progression. 
but they're used to transition between chords and add a little bit of flavour and excitement to the chord progression. So the first type of passing chord we can use is a diminished seventh chord. And diminished seventh chords are really, really great. So here's how you play a diminished seventh chord. Here's an F diminished seventh chord. So we're playing eight on the A, nine on the D, seven on the G, and nine on the B. And you can play diminished seventh chords one fret below whatever the next chord is. So if we're going from G sharp minor nine to F sharp 11, in between that we can play a diminished seventh chord one fret below this F sharp, which would be F. So we're gonna play an F diminished seventh into our F sharp 11. Okay? Another type of passing chord we can use is the secondary dominant. So secondary dominant are where you play a dominant seventh chord one fifth above whatever the next chord in the progression is. So at the end of the chord progression we're playing E major seven and to lead us back into that G sharp we could play a D sharp seven because D sharp is a fifth above G sharp. Those are our passing chords. We've got G sharp minor nine, our passing chords F diminished seventh into our F sharp 11. And then we've got the E major seven and our passing chord D sharp seven into G sharp minor nine. I've done a video showing you 10 types of passing chords you can use. You can check it out here. That's going to give you loads of different options for passing chords. Let's move on to level four. In level four, we're going to be experimenting with different voicings for our chords. Okay, so, so far, we've just been using root position shapes. That means the root note is the lowest note in the chord. There's nothing wrong with it. But if we can start using inversions, we can get cool sounds, we can get smoother sound and just generally add some more variety to our playing. So first of all, we're gonna take this F diminished seventh passing chord, okay? And what we can do with diminished seventh chords is play them three frets higher or three frets lower, and you have the same notes just in a different order. So if I play this F diminished seventh chord, which is at the eighth fret, if I play the same shape at the 11th fret, this is also an F diminished seventh chord, just in first inversion. I'm gonna play this, G sharp or F diminished seventh chord, however you want to call it. And then we're going to go down to our diminished seventh at the eighth fret. Okay, so we're essentially playing the same chord twice, but different inversions, which spices the chord progression up a little bit. Now, another option we have is with this major seven chord, this E major seven. I didn't actually play this shape at all in the example. I played this shape. So, this shape is barring the 9th fret on the top 4 strings and hammering on the 11th fret. Okay, and then playing the open low E string as well. That creates another way of playing an E major 7 chord. Then for our D sharp 7, didn't actually play a D sharp 7 either. I played a D sharp 7 sharp 5 sharp 9. This is an altered dominant chord. Altered dominant chords are dominant seventh chords, but with altered fifths and ninths. So we have a sharp fifth or a flat fifth, or we could add a ninth to our chord and make that a flat nine or a sharp nine. If you want more info on altered dominant chords, check out my video on them there. Otherwise, we'll be here forever. I played this shape here. So we're playing 11 on the low E. We're going to skip the A string. We're going to play 11 on the D, 12 on the G, 12 on the B and then also 14 on the high E. So all together now with all these different chord voicings, we've got. And now let's move on to level five of Neo Soul progressions, and that is the little details. So what I mean by little details are little embellishments, little tricks that we can add to the playing that will just enhance the sound of the chords that we're playing. So what I did at the beginning of the chord progression in the example you heard at the start of the video is I slid into that first chord from the note below, okay, or from the fret below I mean. So simple as that, okay. 
continued with my finger picking pattern. So that's one trick you can use. You can slide in from the fret below. Another trick you can use, which I don't think I used in the example at the start of the video, is the chord quake. So let's use this uh, F sharp 11 chord for an example. So you can play. What I'm doing there is playing each note of the chord one at a time. But before I move to the next chord, I slide down a fret and back up a fret. So, so I do this, play the next note, play the next note, play the next note. Okay. If I used another chord, maybe an E major seven, or an E major nine, I mean, I could do something that sounds a bit like that. So that's the chord quake, that's another option we have. You can also add cool chromatic runs into your chords at the top of the chord. So for this E major 7, I opted not to in the example, but I could have taken this top note and run it down uh, chromatically. And that would have sounded really nice as well. Now I did on the altered chord do a chromatic run. I played the chord, then the top note, we kept descending chromatically, okay, so. And it sounds really cool and it leads really nicely back into the G sharp minor nine. So those are some little tricks you can add to your chord progression to spice things up a little bit. As I said, you don't have to use these. A basic chord progression with level one or level two could be the best thing for your song. So I hope you learned a lot in this video. If you did, click like, let me know what you thought in the comments and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Now, as I said earlier, my new book, Chord Charisma 2.0, is coming out very, very soon. But it's called Chord Charisma 2.0. That means I've got a 1.0. I'd highly recommend checking out the first two chapters of that, which I'm offering for free. In those first two chapters, you're gonna learn how to write your basic chord progression like we did in the first step, but I'm gonna go into way more detail so you know all the options you have for writing chord progressions. And from there, I'm gonna show you to extend those chords into sevenths, ninths, elevenths, thirteenths, that kind of thing, just like we did in step two. So that's completely free for you. Head down to the description. If you want chord charts and that chord diagram, and you want the tab for the example at the beginning, head to the Patreon page down in the description and you can grab all of that there. That being said, check out this video if you haven't done so already and I'll see you there. Have a good one.